Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanagos Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites this, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Do not make for yourselves gods of silver or gods of gold. Make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, your sheep and goats and your cattle. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. The word of the Lord. We continue our study of worship. Remember, we are defining worship as primarily trust, coming into the presence of God and receiving good things from him. Our true worship, then, is when we're out in the world, when we live our vocations as the saints of God, what God has made us to be, righteous in the blood of Christ. So what did Old Testament worship consist of? Well, Old Testament worship had a lot of prescribed things. There were washing rituals. There were sacrifices that were made. There was the temple structure. And there were songs and, and songs and hymns that were sung. And of course, the word of God that would have been written. Alongside of that, you had the Passover celebration and many other events and feasts in the calendar of Old Testament temple worship. But primarily, this worship is going to be a shadow. It is going to be a shadow of the things that are to come. And so, these are not prescribed things for us to follow today. In fact, it would be kind of weird for us to follow these rules. Think about it this way. If God had promised you something and then gave you a brochure of that promise, and then when the promise gift came to you, you wouldn't need the brochure anymore. Let me put it into our modern day context. Let's imagine that I'm going to pull an Oprah and I'm going to say, I'm going to give a new car to all of you. Now that car is going to be detailed just the way you want it. It's going to be custom made. And after each one of you tell me exactly what you want, it's going to take a while for the cars to be made and delivered to you. In the meantime, I'm going to give you one of those fancy brochures that is going to show the picture of your particular car with all the details that you wanted. And you hold on to this brochure as a promise of the gift that is going to come. And then the car is delivered. Do you need the brochure anymore? I suppose you could keep it for, for memory's sake. But you wouldn't keep the brochure and not the car. You don't need the brochure anymore because it's only a picture of what is to come. And now that the gift is here, you don't need it anymore. And this is the exact same thing when it comes to Old Testament and New Testament worship. The sacrifices were sacrifices of animals that pointed ahead to the sacrifice of Christ. The washing rituals pointed ahead to the washing and baptism. All of these things were pointing ahead to Christ. Now, once you have Christ making the actual sacrifice for sin, because there must be a punishment, there must be blood, there must be justice, there must be a death. But once you have that death, you don't need any more pictures of death. You don't need to do those things anymore. This was a tutor. This was a shadow. This was a picture of what was to come. And yet it was very powerful. It taught them something. And notice once again that worship is about God for the people and not the other way around. God didn't need their sacrifices. He was teaching them something. With the sacrifice, he was teaching them that sin is serious and there must be justice and there must be blood. It's just not going to be their blood. 
it's going to be the blood of the true Lamb of God. The washing rituals taught them that they were sinful, they were unclean, and that they couldn't clean themselves, and there was no way that they couldn't be unclean. And so they had to go to the temple priests in order to be cleansed. In the same way, we cannot cleanse ourselves of sin. We need Christ to do that for us. What a wonderful thing it is to live on the other side of Christ, that we have the fulfillment, that we have not just the shadow, but the actual deal. And so these sacrifices don't need to be made anymore. In fact, now the sacrifice of worship is us in the world. We don't have to follow the Passover liturgy anymore because we have Holy Communion and we don't need to constantly go through washing rituals because we have baptism that truly washes our sins away. Once again, worship is God teaching us something, giving us something, and we simply trust. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious, true, and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all that we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.